So today we're first going to review resistors and capacitors and then explain how they are used to make RC filters. So resistors are objects designed to oppose the flow of electric current through a circuit. The relationship between the current through a circuit and the resistance in the resistor is known as Ohm's law, where V is the potential difference between the resistor's terminals, I is the current, and R is the resistance, which has units of ohms, where one ohm is equal to one volt per ampere. The one common way to use resistors is as voltage dividers. A voltage divider is a circuit that produces a predictable fraction of an input voltage as the output voltage. And the simplest voltage divider consists of two resistors connected in series. So if we have a voltage, we have a circuit, one, Two resistors connected to ground, R1, R2. Um, for example, if we apply 5 volts to a circuit with two resistors connected in series, we can use Ohm's law to find the output voltage. The current is the same everywhere, and when two resistors are connected in series, their resistances add up. So if this is 5 volts, um, this is the voltage in and this is the voltage out and using Ohm's law we define V in as equal to the current times R1 plus R2 and V out is equal to the current times the resistance in the second resistor. If R1 is equal to R2, we can call that R. And we solve for the current and plug it into this equation right here, V out. We see that V out is equal to, um, we can do another example um, where R2 is equal to 4R1. In this case, V out is going to be the current times 4 R1 which is going to equal V in over 4 R1 over 5 R1 if we solve for I in the same way we did in the previous example. Then we have 5 which is the voltage in over 5 times 4 is equal to 4 volts and then in this case V out here would be 4 volts. Now we are going to talk about capacitors. Um, and capacitors are objects that store charge across two conducting surfaces separated by a small distance. Now a capacitor with a potential difference across its terminals holds a net positive charge on one surface, so here, and a net negative charge on the other surface. And in this case, no steady current flows through the circuit. However, if we apply an alternating voltage to the circuit, so if V in is actually an alternating voltage that goes between positive and negative, then the net charges on the surfaces of the capacitor also alternate. And so these are going to go like this and then an alternating current is going to flow. Now the relationship between the charge in the capacitor and the voltage is equal to where, where Q is the charge, V is the voltage, and C is the constant of proportionality known as a capacitance. And the capacitance has units of farads where one farad is equal to one coulomb over one volt. Um, the capacitance depends on the size, shape, relative distance between the conducting surface, surfaces and on any material separating them. And the current at any instant depends on how the charge of the capacitor changes over time. So the current depends on dq dt. An alternating voltage produces a sinusoid of frequency f, which gives rise to a current of i naught sine omega t. 
where omega is equal to 2 pi x. So what we can do is we take the integral of both sides Here we find that the charge is equal to I naught cosine omega t over omega. And if we plug this into this equation right here, we find that the voltage is equal to, um, now we can use the trig identity of cosine theta is equal to negative sine theta minus 90 and we have V is equal to I naught omega C times sine of theta minus 90 oh and by the way this is actually a negative here And uh, from this equation, uh, we can see that the current leads the input voltage by 90 degrees. And in fact, in a capacitor, the current and the voltage are, are not in phase. If we look only at the amplitudes of this equation, we can define V naught equal to I naught over omega C, and then Z is equal to 1 over 1 omega C. Z behaves like a frequency dependent resistance. In fact, voltage dividers can also be constructed from two capacitors in series. So we can draw here a circuit with two capacitors connected to ground. Um, and let's say we give it an alternating current plus or minus 5 volts. V out. If we solve for V out and V in like we did in the previous example, V out would equal to 2.5 volts, except that this one would also alternate, like the input voltage. So now we can define a generalized form of Ohm's law where V is equal to IZ. And here Z is known as the impedance. Um, and the impedance is equal to R for resistors, Z of resistors is equal to R, and the impedance for capacitors is equal to 1 over omega C. Um, but actually, when dealing with complex numbers, this, the impedance for capacitors, becomes 1 over I times omega C. And here the imaginary unit represents the phase difference between the current and the voltage. Um, but for our purposes, leaving the imaginary unit out and keeping the phase difference in mind should suffice. So now that we have a generalized form of Ohm's law, um, we can connect both resistors and capacitors in, in series, and it is possible to create frequency-dependent de voltage dividers in this way. Um, these are um, also known as RC filters, which is First, let's construct a circuit with a resistor leading a capacitor. So, in this case, um, V in is going to equal the current times the impedances of the resistor and the capacitor. So, this would be ZR, CZ, and V out is just this drop in voltage, so that's going to equal the current times the impedance of the capacitor. Solving for I, we have V out is equal to... From this equation, we can see that for high frequencies, this term here goes to zero. This means that as frequency increases, the output voltage falls off to zero. So this whole thing is going to go off to zero for um, high frequencies. But as the frequency decreases, the R term in the denominator, this term right here, is going to become negligible. 
and V out is going to approach V in when these two here um, cancel out. This configuration is known as a low pass filter. And so this, this low pass filter lets in the smaller frequencies. We can draw this result with a simple graph. These are the frequencies in omega. This is V out. And we can see that the high frequencies um, cause v, the output voltage to approach zero. Now if we reverse the order of the resistor and the capacitor, we have a circuit that looks like this. In this case, V out is equal to the current times the impedance in the resistor, whereas before it was the impedance in the capacitor. So this is going to be R, and if we solve for I um, in here, it would be N is equal to I times R plus 1 over omega C. Uh, v out is going to equal, um, from this equation, we can see that for low frequencies, the 1 over omega C term would dominate. Uh, and the R's would be negligible and the V out, the, the output voltage would fall off to zero. For high frequencies, the 1 over omega C term would go to zero and so that the resistances cancel and V out would approach V in. This configuration is no, known as a high pass filter. And the high pass filter discriminates against low frequencies and lets the higher ones through. And again, we can draw this with a simple graph. Um, omega V out. Where for low frequencies, V out is zero. And for higher frequencies, uh, V out approaches V in. Now as a reference point, we would like to know the frequency at which the filters output at half power, um, which is known as a 3 dB point. This occurs when the ratio of power out to power in is 1 half. For this equation, we will use the complex voltage out defined for a high pass filter. So that we have, we can cancel out the voltage in um, and then take the absolute value of both sides and then square both sides um, to get solving for R we have R is equal to 1 over omega C and solving for the frequency at the half power point we have 